Hello, in our previous video we talked about carbohydrates and how they were digested and we talked about the fact that we had monosaccharides, disaccharides, polysaccharides. What we're going to look at today is the structure of a particular carbohydrate called glucose that you need to know and how glucose can combine with other uh, glucose molecules or one molecule of glucose can combine with other molecules of glucose and how that reaction happens. So just as a reminder you may remember from uh, your GCSE studies that glucose has the formula of C6H12O6 and this is one way in which we can represent the structure of glucose. Now you can see the hydrogens and oxygens there, you can see one of the carbons. The rest of the carbons aren't actually shown in this diagram but they would be here, here, if I put it as a C, here, here, here and here. So there's one, two, three, four, five and six. That's the sixth one, sixth one there. Okay so that's the structure. Now you have to actually know the structure of um, glucose. In actual fact this is alpha glucose so we write alpha with a little sign like that but you don't need to know it in quite as much uh, detail as this. You need to be aware that the structure for alpha glucose is that and that's the level of detail in which you need to um, know or remember so that you are able to draw it if you had to and it's probably good to remember that there are other uh, hydrogen and oxygen um, atoms in the uh, structure but in the corners here we have our carbons and while they're not drawn in and while you don't need to remember um, that's where the carbons are because one important fact about glucose is that it's a six carbon uh, carbohydrate okay so here we have our simplified version and it's definitely worth you making a note of that um, just so that you know how to draw it but here's one of our uh, molecules of alpha glucose and we can show how two molecules can react together to form um, a di what we call a disaccharide and we'll look at what that disaccharide is in a minute but the way this happens is we have to look at these two uh, parts of the molecule here and what happens is two H's and one O is removed and we end up with removing a molecule of water so that's H2O being removed and then these two actually then join and combine together so it would look like this okay so we can see two H's and an O removed we have now produced a disaccharide and this disaccharide if you remember is called maltose so two alpha glucose molecules can combine together by this reaction to produce maltose. Now it's uh, important that you remember the name of this type of reaction and it's called a condensation reaction. A very important name that you need, to, you need to remember. It's called a condensation reaction and we end up producing what we call a glycosidic bond or a glycosidic link okay so that's the glycosidic link right there between those two alpha glucose molecules and again glycosidic being a very important keyword um, so it might be worth noting that uh, anytime you see the word glyco in a word or as a prefix of a word it's usually to do with a sugar or to do with a carbohydrate so other words you might come across are glycoproteins glycolipids but uh, we'll look at that in in future videos okay so um, that's basically what we have and when we've produced this maltose uh, molecule we can actually get rid of all those we can actually see that they're disaccharides like so and these can actually then join together with enzymes or enzymes can be used to join these together and when we join a lot of these maltos together we end up with starch and what we did in our previous previous video was we looked at how starch is broken down um, by a reaction called hydrolysis which breaks it down uh, and how it can then be uh, broken down into glucose but now we're looking at how actually uh, glucose molecules can be uh, joined together, bonded together by a condens condensation reaction all the way up to larger molecules of starch. Starch remember is actually produced in plants, it's a plant carbohydrate we can quite happily eat that in things like potatoes and uh, bread, pasta, that sort of thing and then that can be broken down for us to use uh, in our bodies. 
So that's one way of showing the uh, diagram. Sometimes in exams or in textbooks you might see the lines just drawn like this rather than at an angle like as I've done here. Um, but just remember it's actually the same thing and if you were showing this reaction, the condensation reaction, you would show it again in the same way that we did previously and then the diagram would end up looking something like this where you just draw, in a, draw a couple of extra li lines just to show that glycosidic link that's been produced from that condensation reaction. You should also be able to apply this to slightly different carbohydrates. Here I've got uh, two carbohydrates. You should recognize this one uh, by now as alpha glucose. Uh, this is not one that you need to know or remember how to draw but this is actually fructose and you do need to know the name fructose and when you join glucose and fructose together you get a disaccharide called sucrose we've talked about this again uh, previously in another video but what if you had to show the condensation reaction between glucose and fructose well the condensation reaction is the same we are removing a molecule of water to join these two together. While you don't need to remember necessarily the structure of this, if you were presented with uh, a scenario like this, you can see that the condensation reaction is going to be very similar. So again, all you do is remove a molecule of water like so. Oops, arrow's gone funny. Again, it's a condensation reaction. Again, we get a glycosidic link and here is our molecule of sucrose. So very simply drawn with the extra line there with the oxygen in between there. So that again, that's our glycosidic bond. Okay, so this is how uh, two um, carbohydrate molecules, two glucose molecules can join together or maybe glucose and fructose can join together via a condensation reaction um, to make a disaccharide. What you also need to know is the fact that um, we have some important disaccharides that you need to remember and those are sucrose, lactose, maltose and while starch is not a disaccharide um, you need to remember that it's made of loads of maltose uh, units. So glucose and fructose makes sucrose um, again via a condensation reaction and that glycosidic link. Glucose and galactose can be uh, joined together to make lactose. We actually looked at how lactose can be broken down to make these two but we're now actually going backwards. Um, it's not a huge uh, leap of understanding, it's quite straightforward. Glucose and glucose you can make your maltose and remember lots of maltose and maltose and maltose and maltose. Lots of maltose uh, molecules can join together to make starch. So there we have it. This is an, uh, an outline of our carbohydrates and how we can bond monosaccharides together to make disaccharides and so on. These slides are probably quite important for you to make a note of and you should be able to do the kinds of things that I was doing as we were going through the video here. Okay, but that's me done for today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.